Hi guys, I'm Jacqueline Cow and I'm right here at Bean Brothers and right here with me are Effie on my left and Pang on my right and we'll be talking about tech wearables market, right? So nowadays we can't help but to notice that the person who's sitting on our right is wearing a Fitbit, um, the person that, you know, our relatives, our friends, they're probably into Apple Watch. You are wearing a, can you tell us what you're wearing? A Samsung, Samsung Gear S2. Samsung Gear S2. And we have a Mi Band. Mi Band. And this is an LG G Watch. And there's just so many wearables out there at the moment. What do you guys think about the wearables market? How have they helped the efficiency and productivity of our lives? Generally, I'm still not very optimistic in the whole wearable scene. Uh, I feel like for one of my main concerns, my main gripes about it is really the fact that it still doesn't, hasn't found its identity yet as a niche product. You can't live without a laptop, you can't live without a computer, you can't live without a, uh, you can't live without a smartphone, but you can't live without a smartwatch. And, yeah. There you go. Yeah. I think there were a lot of uh, debates about this in the past, saying that I don't want a, a, something that's connected to my phone that just pushes notifications and letting me know that hey, I have, an, I have messages, I have WhatsApp messages, I have emails, mm -hmm. when I can do that on my phone. So you're not convinced or you're not optimistic about the whole tech wearable scene, so why the Fitbit on your right wrist? Uh, so basically I'm reviewing this one. Okay. Uh, so this is something that I actually prefer because it's actually a focus device. Mm -hmm. um, it's a fitness tracker. Mm -hmm. You tap between the things, the first thing you press, there's only one button. It tells you how many steps you've taken. It has a heart rate monitor inside, which is always on. Uh, and it can basically, with one long press of this button, it, you can start off workout mode. Basically, it tracks with a timer. It tracks your calorie count, how much calories you've burned. It also tracks your sleep. And then from there, it gives you a chart and tells you how much you've slept. So you get a report card Correct. at the end of the day. <laughs> report card. Correct. Report card. Yeah. <laughs> like how well you've slept, oh, and now you, you have to... So you know whether or not you're stressed, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. What prompted you to buy your Samsung Gear? Okay, the thing is, I've been using wearables since the first generation, the Samsung Galaxy Gear. So, unlike Pang, you're a lover of tech wearables? I'm not really a lover of wearables. More like I'm re a recent convert. Oh. Okay, because I've been, I've been using it for the last three generations. It's only until this generation that I finally see that the implementation of software, uh, the type of sensors, the accuracy and everything, finally you can see that there's a concerted effort by Samsung to make everything works and now only recently uh, I tried to lose a bit of weight oh, okay. and I need some kind of motivation and this watch will tell me maybe after a few uh, half an hour if I'm sitting way too long you have to walk it will vibrate so I'm wearing it now to see the progress from the first time I used it four months ago so I can see a gradual change of my heart rate now it, it's 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 going to where it's supposed to be now, normal. Instead of me continuing my unhealthy ways of, you know, eating a lot of junk food, uh, not really taking care of my diet, so I lose a bit of weight. So I would say that this watch actually is now changing my life. So that's why I say I'm a recent convert. Now I find, I'm finally seeing how it could change someone's life. Okay. Especially for people like me who never really take care of their body all this while. The entry point of the wearable segment is really high. Okay, I'm gonna take this away because this is 59 ringgit, 69 <laughs> ringgit, right? Okay. This is by far the most affordable wearable, okay. and it, within one year, it's taken 20% market share globally. This is about 700 ringgit. That's 1,300. Yeah. Uh, that's Apple Watch, as you know, it's already. Yeah. It's depending on which high. bands you choose, it yeah. can be anywhere between 1,600. That's the Hermes one as well. Correct. How are you gonna convince people to sh shell out the same amount you pay for a pretty good phone yep. for something that you wear that doesn't really tell the time. Can you tell me the time now? You have to lift it up, yep. right? And that's the problem again. For me, I totally use the wearable in a totally different way. It's not just for tracking uh, my, st my stats and everything. Uh, I like, when, when I write, I like to have like two hours of uninterrupted time, just me with my keyboard and write. And being in my, in, in my industry, there's a lot of phone calls, a lot of email notifications. But with wearables, I can actually like screen. Oh, it's an email from this particular PR. I don't want to answer it yet. <laughs> keep, keep on writing. I only take like two seconds, just a peek, instead of having to unlock everything. So it saves a lot of time. It's a luxury I gladly pay. Because okay. time is money for me. 
So there are statistics that say that people who wear smartwatches or wearables as a whole, they stop wearing them after six months. It's a very big study uh, in a global scale and they had a survey and they found that after six months people just ditched their watch, smartwatches and wearables away. they spend first. They spend, they, they buy, buy and then six months down the line they stop wearing it. And then they, then they, they came about with like several reasons. Part of reasons, that number one is because battery life. Yeah, so I totally agree on that. Battery life, your watch lasts for two days two on the charge. Usually right? one and a half days, Correct. usual. And that becomes another thing that you need to remember. You need to remember to charge your... But you charge your phone every day. It's totally different though. This yes. is the reason why. If this particular watch, the battery is one-tenth of a, a, a normal phone, but it takes more than an hour to charge a 300 milliamp battery. So it gets a bit annoying because you put it on a cradle for 10 minutes, so you want to go out, it increases maybe like 7%. 7% is not good enough to, to even last, say, two hours. So. What, I, what, what happened these days is I just put it anytime I can. Just put it... How about uh, when you're about to sleep? Before I go to sleep, I put it in front of the TV. And okay, to charge it, then there I have go. to carry the charger. And the charger, and the charger, they have a special charger it's for cradle, it, right? which is annoying. Yeah. Because you have to carry that particular charger. You cannot use this normal one. So, as Pang said, uh, there's this no synergy in things what they're doing. It will be cool if all smartwatches can use, like, say, a USB-C. USB correct. So you can use a universal one. If you forget to bring a charger, you can borrow from a friend. Right. So I think this I think this will happen. This will eventually happen. And another another thing that I noticed about wearables is the if you compare it to a normal watch, the quality is not the same. And what actually happened to this particular watch is I use it for a month and it snaps. Oh, the strap. The strap snaps uh, within a month. I have been wearing a watch, a normal analog watch. I wore it for three years. I don't have to change it once. If you're paying 1200 for something like this, the strap should be of a higher quality. So the quality is also an issue now with all the wearables that I've tested. All right, so really quickly, gentlemen, what are you anticipating for the future of wearables? I hope that it becomes more focused in the sense that, okay, this is a fitness tracker. It's going to just do this. This is a watch replacement. It's gonna do these things, but it won't, like, the option of having the fitness tracking thing, it should at least come with compatible accessories out of the box. And because the entry, the barrier of entry is gonna be very high in terms of the price point, it shouldn't be made even higher when you want it to do even more. For me, uh, as Pang said, the price is very high. I see in the next two years, it's gonna get really cheap. Just like when first, people first adopted 1080p TVs, yeah. used to be 17,000, now you can get one for about 1,000. Same goes to phones, now you can get a decent one for 600. And when you look at any smartwatches in the market now, especially on Android, it's basically just a four-year-old phone converted into a watch and the price should reflect that. I'm really hoping that it gets cheaper because if it can change my life, it should change other people who don't have the access to this particular tech on their wrist. Yeah. Okay. So be more focused and the price point should price hit point a sweet spot. All right. It should be 70% cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It remains to be seen whether or not it will achieve that. Thank you so much, Pang. Thank you so much, Effie, for being with me here today at Bean Brothers. We should grab some lunch. Thank you. Yes. Let's go. Cool. <laughs>